Welcome back everyone to Let's Play World Waves as Great Britain, episode number 11. Time to carry forth with this battle which we started. Uh, the royalty probably against an, uh, a very uneven onslaught of enemies if the game is going to be true to how it's been dictating these battles lately. Uh, let's just find out. So here we go. What are you up against, royalty? What are you up against? First of all, it's calm, midday, Wind is out of the southwest, so we are not favored in that sense. But if we have any luck here, maybe we are up against um, light cruisers. Going to keep going slow, even if they disengage. I think our main objective is to defend a target. I don't know. But it's just a cruiser engagement, so... Oh, well, maybe... Well, if it's just a one-on-one, -on -one, we'll take it. <laughs> That'll be very helpful in determining uh, who should win this the um, in invasion attack. Okay, we're actually starting to engage. They have definitely claimed the wind side, but armored cruiser versus light cruiser, that shouldn't even matter much. And we can kind of push them where we want them. We already landed a few hits, took a few hits. Still launching, or still lobbing our 10-inch shells at them. Can't wait to bring our rear into the action. Our rear gun, our rear turret. A few hits, though. Uh, just don't get too close that we actually um, take a torpedo. That's the only way we can lose. So, yeah, we're in good range. Now we just follow them from the wind side. Just keep a pretty steady... How are we doing? 22 still. Very good. We should have done some damage by now. There we go. A few more hits. Come on, let's get those in. A few more, a few more, a few more. Man, I wanted to run straight because we had landed a few hits. And you do have a bonus for... If you're on target, you have a bonus for... Um, after you land a hit, to land another one on the next minute. It did not happen there. So, sometimes that's why I don't, I mean, usually that's when you end up getting hit by torpedoes, when you're trying to run straight for a long time because you're landing hit after hit, and then, well, joke's on you, you get hit by a torpedo. So, slowly but steadily, this is, uh, we can probably go fast. This is all but over, right? Just waiting for the fat lady to sing here. You know, if we get very unlucky, we could actually lose her in the diamond anyhow. Oh, okay, we're not going to get very unlucky then. There it is. Okay, so they considered us light damage, but still a major victory for us. We are slowly whittling away at their light cruisers. <laughs> I don't think we're causing any kind of uh, major distress on their, on their fleet yet. They still have 17, so yeah. We have 13 more being built. My goodness. But that's good to see. All right, well, then we just keep pushing. We are, are definitely overstocked in the east, on the East Coast, but I think there's one base here that I was prioritizing more than the others for being built up. 50, 50, maybe not. They're all kind of... Let's just actually... I'm kind of tempted to send... No, value of 1. Let's do value of 50. This one also has more. Let's improve this base. Very good. So that way we can support more people here. Although the only... I mean, the only advantage we have of increasing our capacity here is defending against um, the Americans, and then maybe, if we get lucky, taking Maine. But the budget is not a huge concern right now, so we might as well spend that money if we think it might be at all helpful. And how much over are we? Just barely. Oh my goodness, just barely. Okay, so this is good news, actually. We can just pull back... How many armored cruisers do we have in... I think we have two. Let's put one down to... Okay, the Bird of Prey is actually out. So let's move the royalty back down to... The Caribbean? Um, and that should be enough, because I want the light cruisers in support for a possible fleet engagement, but that should clear up enough room. Actually, we might even get... Might be a little bit more ballsy and just say no to that. And how many... Yeah, we have plenty of... 
change my mind. Let's move one of these back to Northern Europe and instead keep our royalty here. So this will be a kind of a pain in the butt. Da, da, cancel movement orders, close. All right, next turn. Our forces are fighting valiantly in Bermuda. We, we would expect so. Okay, and this is fantastic. Oh, nope, this is not fantastic. This is the opposite of fantastic. Taking advantage of our naval weakness in the, uh, the Caribbean. U.S. troops have invaded our position in Trinidad. I thought I sent two... I thought I sent two battleships down there, but maybe it wasn't enough. Okay, we'll accept this. We need to. We need all the victories we can get. In fact, I almost should have just declined this so that we could have focused more on doing stuff in the Caribbean and uh, in the East Coast. But well, okay. Let's see what what happens here. Squad Max. Just charge right at him. This looks like another. Oh, this is actually a destroyer. Are you kidding me? <laughs> well, that was a pointless engagement. I was very risky there, almost getting hit by a torpedo, but I just, uh, what are we going to do? It's such a, wait a second, wait, wait, wait. So we don't have a Crampton accommodation, so I don't know why that is. All right, now this is the sad thing. The Trinidad is being invaded, so I thought we put some battleships. I also failed to put... No, I did put two. They have, like, basically everything there. Does that mean we're blockading them? We are. We are blockading the Americans. Hmm. Do we need to blockade them? I would rather fight the, feet, the fleet fight first. Whee! Tongue, twist, tongue twister. So let's do this. Let's move these ships down to the Caribbean, which should be enough to... Um, I mean, basically, we're just going to move these guys around wherever they're needed. I'm actually not going to move the Vanguard because she is only in fair condition having... She's in need of supply, basically. So let's change the Vanguard to not move and close. So she'll stay with the other um, Hornblower class ships. But the rest of our renowns move down the Caribbean to face, hopefully, the Americans in a big ol' fleet fight. We'll see if that actually comes to fruition now. Um, yeah, we are ahead. We shall not let them off lightly. Darn it. Well, we did gain large territories and considerable war reparations. I think what we should do is begin picking at their Caribbean holdings. Okay, we don't even really have... <laughs> we can't really even do much. Uh, we can't even get Puerto Rico or Panama. We can't jump. What can we even do? I mean, this just happens to be a terrible situation where we're going to have to take, like, Guam, Guantanamo Bay and the Eastern Aleutians, which are not prized possessions by any stretch of the imagination. But we want to inflict as much damage upon the U.S. as we can, so we'll do it this way. Um, the Eastern Aleutians, actually, maybe this isn't so bad, because maybe I it means I have to focus less on Southeast Asia and um, on the West Coast in a possible future conflict. Okay, so that is a very quick conclusion to that war, and unfortunately our budget is now rather in the tank. I think what I'll do is put these on, well, let's first move them all back to home waters. Pretty much everyone moves back to home waters, and we figure out um, the foreign tonnage situation after that. So I'm pretty sure all my battleships were originally in Northern Europe before the war began, meaning that I can move them all back there, and it shouldn't affect my standing on, tor on foreign stations. I mean, we'll find out if that's true or not very soon. Okay, this one's in South... Yeah, your active fleet move, Northern Europe. So that'll help the budget a bit. I'm going to probably put these Dreadnoughts onto Reserve Fleet because... They didn't see any action, so they shouldn't be in any better crew shape than just the default. Um, actually, two in the Mediterranean does make sense. One in Southeast. These make sense, and these are already in North. Okay, that's all fine. 
that is all good this looks fine i think everything else is fine i probably need to do like off-camera corrections to anything here if um any corrections in fact need to be done we'll put the awakened back to northern europe because i'm pretty sure we don't need more than three in the caribbean uh the wave rider as well actually we'll probably move one of these over to the east coast because i'm not sure what the status of the east coast is how we'll be doing after all those ships move out okay so we're down to 9 million and these guys are all back. They're in good shape, but you know what? Please just go to reserve fleet. And uh, more important, I mean, because these already have the upgraded central firing, but if you remember, our Hornblower class is still using central range finder. So we're gonna have to upgrade that. We just don't have the capability of doing that quite yet. Now we only have four more months. We have to survive with such a negative budget, which we should be able to do. And then we'll have the rainbow finished and uh, that will be uh, almost half of our monthly balance is going towards that we'll start building up tensions with people you know all, the whole thing and eventually get our budget back up there speaking of budget this is a chance for either budget intention or prestige hmm Well, it kind of seems like a no-brainer. We're in a situation where we don't really need prestige, but we pretty much do need money. So, intention also helps money. Oil. Oh, we have oil. I can't believe we have oil. That's uh, kind of so strange. I wish we had gotten these renowns into... I really want to get into another war immediately. I want to test these renowns before, it's, before they're like kind of obsolete. Now, it's only 1908. They shouldn't be obsolete at least until 1915, but... I really want to see how they do. Okay, better submarines. This is good. We do eventually want submarines, believe it or not. Okay, the Rainbow's Commission. We're down to only 3 million in cost. That's good. New docks completed. I won't rebuild them immediately. Here's the French Dreadnought. Interesting. 11-inch guns. Surprising. Good strong armor, but I think our armor is actually pretty strong as well. Just to double check... Yeah, we went with 10 and a half, 11, 11. That's pretty good. Um, yeah, that's definitely good. Could have gotten two and a half for the deck. I know deck and deck extended are both two, but that's just because I couldn't stretch out. Our um, dock capacity at the time was only 24,000. We're at 32,000 now. My goodness, my. It's, it's a big difference. Okay, more fire control, which is always good. The rainbow finished her working up. It seems the smallest. What? Ah, probably means where prestige drops. Uh, no, it didn't immediately. Uh, and some of our ships are going obsolete. Okay, well that makes sense. It's now almost 1910. Let's take a look at this claim that we have the least number of armored cruisers out of anybody. We do. We do. Well, we're at the point where we really should just be building a, a battle cruiser. So, if as long as he's not going to complain immediately, uh, I think what we ought to do is just try to keep it going as long as possible this way. Um, okay, I think the retrofits. Nope, we got to wait on the retrofits because we just don't have the money for it right now. Although we will lose these unless we retrofit them, so we will we'll do these dependents. I'm not sure. I've we might have already been losing a few of them. Uh, minesweepers are scrapped immediately as soon as they're not, um, as soon as they get become obsolete. So, but they don't cost anything to refit. You'll see that if I do this, my budget might even go up. Negative 3.4, rebuild, and negative 3.4. So it doesn't, it just doesn't change anything. That's why you can do those immediately. We do need a destroyer as well. Um, somebody mentioned on the previous video's comments that uh, destroyers were really popular. Um, by the way, this is a batch recording with the previous episode. Um, so remember, this episode began with the naval fight. I'm actually recording this just right on the back of the previous recording, so I'm not seeing the comments from the previous video. But two videos ago, at least, people were commenting that, well, one person commented that destroyers are like the, the legacy that the British had, they were well known for. I would say also they're battleships of course but uh it's true they do they do have a lot of destroyers so we will be getting those out but just as soon as they become useful 
Ah, fantastic. And better rate of fire, which is great. So that's really good. A good turn for us. We just have to wait how much longer? So close. Four more months, I don't think we're gonna make it. We'll probably have to put a few on pause, but that's okay. And I will rename these, again, I forgot to do it off camera, because again, it's, this is batch recording, but we'll get the names of the Curacao, uh, Curacao, this one's Curacao, Curacao, um, through the conquest. We'll rename those to more light cruisers, plenty of light cruisers available. Better, wow, it's fantastic. The Asian National Hero. Wow, 15 inch quality negative one. Well, I'll take it. I'll take the quality negative one, just like I took the quality negative one on my 14 inch guns, just because we do suppose that eventually those naval armaments will be increased. So, okay, perfect timing. Some ships finishing. <sighs> Plenty of ships finishing. Should be like 30 of them in all. All right. Yes, by my, wow, it's really early, but it's the Japanese, we don't really care about them, so take it. Torpedoes, better, wow, lots of good stuff going on. And we somehow are ahead of the, <laughs> we're ahead of the game here. Still keep managing to stay above. Okay, this might be the first turn we actually have to halt one ship. Who's my volunteer? The Carysfort. We will halt for one month. Ah, I knew this would happen. I knew that we couldn't be blessed with good luck. The Dreadnoughts had the uh, better than 19 speed, the 20 speed, so they surpassed their design speed. But these have trouble reaching it, so they'll only be t speed of 24, which is pretty terrible. I'd much rather it in reverse. The Dreadnoughts rarely need to actually hunt down things, but light cruisers very often do. But that's just the way the cookie crumbles sometimes you get unlucky we have a huge monthly balance i think what we'll be doing next is the armor cruiser refits oh uh, boy this is gonna be a pain in the butt because i'm gonna have to micromanage the foreign tonnage situation which is gonna be uh yeah just painful huh, maybe this is a point in the game where i should cut away and do that and then come back maybe i might be able to manage it anyway though so, for example, we are over where? On the East Coast. So the East Coast ships can both be retrofitted. Okay, so what do we do for this? We need central firing, which, I mean, we're still fine. It's fantastic. Do we want to replace it? How expensive would this be? So if we just do this, it just is 385 for four months. 10, 1 million. Ooh, I don't think so. What does it mean in terms of speed? 24 and oil. Not good enough. Not good enough. Maybe the next retrofit, but not this one. So we'll do this. And just take this up to 160. Why not? And save this as our new design. Okay, good to take it in. Um, and the ones in Northern Europe also can be retrofit. So this is perfect. So then I'll be able to send all of the ones in Northern Europe when they, um, when the current batch is done. I can spread them out around the world. And this is kind of a nice way of cycling the ships that are in different places as well. So two more. And all the rest I'm imagining we have West Coast. Probably we can get one out of the West Coast. No, wait, wrong area. Yeah, 14,000, that's just enough for one of these to also be rebuilt. Okay, good. And anything else though? Maybe even one more? Mediterranean probably can also be rebuilt, right? Med, nope, actually not. But we can solve that problem very easily by just getting one other battleship to move down to the Mediterranean. So now next turn I'll be able to refit that one as well. And then those, again, will just spread out to the far reaches of the earth and the ones that are already at the far reaches of the earth will, will be cycled back. So, and we'll also have to do the light cruisers. Okay, lots of retro, lots of refits then. That's what this episode is gonna boil down to. 
Prime Minister wants to hold an international naval gathering with a sailing regatta and competition. This will strengthen our international standing and lessen tensions, but the money to finance... Ugh. Sounds terrible. But prestige up. Maybe I should just take it. Tension down. No. No. I just can't. I don't see any reason. Hmm. Okay, now we have the actual one in the Mediterranean, so the one in the Mediterranean can be rebuilt. Okay, good. How are we doing in the Caribbean? Yeah, we actually have enough in the Caribbean because we, I think, well, I actually don't know how. I guess we have a lot of light cruisers there. So we rebuild you as well. It's almost all of them. <laughs> Just a, a few spattering of armored cruisers that we weren't able to get in. Uh, Southeast Asia actually, actually has 24,000, so that one can be done as well. How nice. Is that true though, or are we gonna see some problems? Nope, it actually was true. Southeast Asia still has enough. We can actually get another ship rebuilt there, but we don't have another one to build. Mediterranean is fine, so I think the ones we have left are the west coast and the east coast, and both of those are not in a position where we can take one way. Okay, very good. So, we'll just wait for those to finish then. And we have a lot of money left over, so I guess we'll start doing the retrofits on these ships as well, which will be pretty expensive. We can just do maybe three at a time. Let's do a central firing and drop this down to 130, which is plenty. That's a good number of shells. I didn't realize. I can't. We should really... I wish these were in more fleet fights because that's a great number, man. It's really a great number. So I'll just save like this. Nothing special. We won't be replacing their machinery ever. Okay, we can actually do a few more. That was cheaper than I expected. I mean, they are extremely cheap. Why are they so cheap? My monthly balance isn't dropping at all. We did put... Please tell me, okay, let me... This... I did put central firing on it, yeah, because we had to lower the am am ah, ammunition by one. Uh, let's just double check, though, because I'm starting to get paranoid. Open. Warm blower, 1909. Yep, central firing. Okay, good. Then, I guess, well, we have these in northern Europe to hold down the fort, so get all the horn blowers being rebuilt. We'll do the same thing. We'll just cycle those in and out. All right, this is, again, this is the boring stuff. But it's not going too slowly, surprisingly. And our budget just keeps increasing, which I like to see. Okay, secondary turrets on BBs, that's fantastic. I think that was the one I just clicked past on accident. It's the problem when you have too many of these ships getting rebuilt. Good, so now we have two. So this is obvious, we're gonna send one to the west coast, one to the east coast. West Coast, move to the East Coast. And in this way, we will be cycling our armored cruisers. I don't even know which two I'm grabbing. I'm just sending the first two out. <laughs> and these will be replaced. So these are the last ones. They'll probably end up back in Northern Europe. Um, we also have one in the Indian Ocean. Wait. No, we don't have one on the East Coast. We only have one. Nope. Don't move. You're moving where? Yeah, East Coast, let's move you to the Indian Ocean instead, because that is where we have the Albion. So the Aegis is in West Coast. Now we're doing the orders correctly. Good. Very good. Okay, more finish of stuff. Um, although, what we're going to have to do is take control of the areas where the light cruisers need to be when they refit. Yeah, this is going to be a pain. So, one of the new ones built, Royalty. Actually, St. George seems really appropriate to move into the Caribbean. Okay, once you're there, you will kind of act as a, a stopgap against the light cruisers, which we're now going to be starting to rebuild. Actually, we have the Achilles. The Achilles can move far and wide. Yeah, this is a good point. But the ones in Northern Europe, we obviously can refit these, no problem, because... We have plenty in Northern Europe. 
Uh, now, interestingly enough, the Achilles might qualify for a replacement of machinery because that will take her speed back up, I believe. I'm not sure. But in this case, it's very easy. We just do central firing. It doesn't even, you know, can we get this up? Yeah, even better. Let's do that. And there's the 1909 version. Um, anybody in Northern Europe can just immediately refit. And Mediterranean is plenty of space, so we can get those as well. Whoops. All right, this is what I'm going to do. I am going to do this off camera. It looks like this video is at 25 minutes. What I think I'll do is actually, yeah, I'll do it off camera and I'll, I'll come back in if there's anything else interesting to, to remark on. Maybe I'll just do quick cuts like, okay, this is another 30 second thing just to show this off. And mainly what I'm gonna be doing is uh, cycling forward in time. This is just tedious. So I'll, I won't bother you guys with it. Um, so uh, I'll see you back in a second when I have the final report on our positions or an update on some kind of event. Well, I left you off on April 1909. It's now just August 1909, just transitioning, and we have this wonderful event. Um, it's always nice when we get to say somebody is threatening the, the high seas, basically. And I really want to go to war with the U.S. again. I feel like we got a, we, we let them off a little bit easy. So that is actually going to be my target. I'm actually kind of even deploying my forces accordingly. So we'll definitely choose them. And that's really all I wanted to, all I wanted to say uh, so far. Basically, we're almost done with the refits. Um, I'm just trying to plan out a reasonable number of ships in the different areas. I think we can't take that one out yet. Nope. Um, yeah, but it's, it, we're doing an, we're in much better shape than we were. So we just need to get some of these ships over. So the Southeast Asia is now covered. Oh, these are the old ones though. Okay, so I have three old ones. All right, anyways, I'll get back to you when the the final work is done. But even I'm putting my Achilles, my new light cruiser class, in the um, around the American forces as a, just as a preemptive measure, I'm expecting that perhaps they will be our next target. I don't want to go to war with France again. We actually robbed France of quite a large supply of their colonies, right? Two, maybe three? Corsica, yeah, so we took, I think Corsica is now ours because of it, uh, Tunisia, Algiers, um, and then we also took Anam, where is it, no, French, no, Cochin China, that's right, we took that, I guess the French do still have plenty, you know, this is perfect, I would, I would be fine going to war with either of those nations, but we do want to continue our war, our war path, I guess, we're going to try to conquer as much territory as possible in the name of king and country. So I'll just jump back when we have something more to report. All right, it's only been like a second more, but uh, since the next turn, after doing a few more changes, we get to see the U.S. Dreadnought that we'll possibly be facing. They're using 10 13-inch guns compared to my 10 14-inch guns. They do have secondaries, 14 5-inch guns. Lower armor. I'd give our... I think I'd give our Dreadnought uh, the nod, but it's a close one because they definitely, that definitely looks like super firing, or yeah, super firing rear turrets. So um, although we have the same broadside, they have a better um, rear firing solution or whatever. Um, um, yeah. But they also have one lower caliber. However, their 13 inch guns might be quality zero. I don't know. We only have quality negative one. So yeah. There's those kind of things to consider. Okay, this one's now done, ready to be rebuilt. Slowly but steadily, we're making progress. Now, we also have a huge amount of money. So I think it's time for us to design a new ship. And I think, at this point, 1909 in the game, with oil, four centerline turrets, everything basically working out such that... I think it's going to be time to get our first battle cruiser, which is going to be called the Fortune Class, um, not in honor of... Blinson, or I forgot your your YouTube channel's name. Sorry, Blinson. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, is, I'm going to try to pick ship names, battle cruiser names that fit within the Fortune theme. But what do we want for this ship? Okay, we'll obviously have to rename it again. But this is not what I want. 
Oh, okay, now this is also an interesting decision. Oh, 15 inch guns, this thing is gonna be amazing. Probably quality five inch guns is gonna be okay. We can get this thing, why, why spare the expense? 27 would be nice. I feel like that's okay. Um, I, I wouldn't go much faster than that, it would be too expensive. But 15 inch guns, I don't like this. I, I don't know why we would do this. 1395, let's see if it costs any more. If we just add them as centerline stuff. So after superline, ours after superimposed, it was a double. 1395, it's the same. Yeah, why would we, <laughs> why would we possibly want to do that? Too bad we don't have forward super firing. We only have this strange reverse turret, which has the um, narrow firing arc. So we'll delete that one. I just really don't like the way it looks facing backwards. Um, so I guess we have to do this one, which is not my favorite one to do. It even doesn't look right. I don't think I'm going to design this quite yet. I would love to get superimposed fronts. And another thing I was considering doing is not using um, anything more than double turrets, which is kind of the British way. I mean, the exception there are exceptions, certainly. Nelson, yeah. So maybe what we'll do is just use... We won't use any quad turrets. Although they even used quad turrets, the um, Queen Elizabeth, right? Is that what it was? Or, yeah, I think it was the Queen Elizabeth, right? Um, we had a 4-2-4 four, four configuration. Anyways, I guess we can use whatever we want because the British have done it all. So, But I'm going to think more about this, and more importantly, I'm just going to continue with the you know, boring behavior of uh, setting up all our foreign stations, and I'll come back in a bit. All right, well, I don't think we have any other real changes to make for foreign stations. It's basically all done or sorting itself out currently. Um, and uh, research changes. So I want to make a destroyer, but what I've done is I've moved this from medium to high and this from low to medium because I want double launchers, and I think that's in light forces and torpedo warfare. So I want this one high. Now, we have so many things on high right now because I also moved up subdivision and damage control from medium to high. Uh, so the question is, where do we make cutbacks? Because if you put everything to high, you might as well have everything on low. It doesn't really matter. It's tough. It's really tough to say because I, I really don't know where we can make the cutbacks necessary to support so many things on high. Um, I don't know, so I'll just leave it as it is for now. But, okay, well, let's, uh, we're kind of cutting it close on money. How's our, wow, our yearly budget is not going up as much as I thought. That's okay, we'll just keep going. More things are finishing. Um, as long as they're not taking, the finance department isn't taking money away from us, I'm okay. Okay, during maneuvers, one of our ships was has opened fired on a fishing boat from Russia. We don't care about Russia. And sector six, yay, we're getting close. I just wish we had some better, oh boy, technology or something. Why, how do they have an armed merchant cruiser if they're not at war? Hmm. Just making sure we're not losing any money still. This is all intelligence, so it would be up here. We're looking okay. Yeah, I, I was going to build a few more of the light cruisers because I, I feel like we these are so useful on foreign stations. And, and you know, they just, they are kind of a standalone unit. You can send them anywhere. So, um... I just don't think it's worth it to build any more of our, our Achilles class, though, because it's already, in a way, obsolete. First of all, it has that one knot decrease. Second of all, it's oil firing to begin with. Um, we've had research which has come, like, in terms of hull savings, machinery, all that stuff since then. So I would just much rather build a new light cruiser class, but we don't need that next. We certainly want a battle cruiser soon and it's always good to consider that the battle cruiser is going to take like two and a half years to build so the sooner we start it the sooner we can actually use it and it's already 1910 so that's probably what we have to do is just build a new battle cruiser but i just don't like we don't have forward superimposed research yet it's the one limiting factor for me yeah i know i know japanese is they're wanting to buy a lot of stuff i'm willing to sell it to them Okay, I feel like we can't wait any longer. The only the other problem is we don't have 
Uh, I was looking at destroyer design, so this is what I came up with. If we just let the computer auto design some, it comes up with destroyers with only two. Why? Because we don't have double torpedo launchers yet, which is, I think, the key technology for building really good destroyers. It won't even let me build this. This is an illegal design that the computer has just designed for us. <laughs> the kale, and I, I dislike the taste of kale, so we will not name it that. Uh, anyway, uh, this is fine that we just look at this, but I don't think we'll build the destroyer yet, which means we really just have to, I think, unfortunately. I hate an uneven battle, sh or um, I hate an uneven battle cruiser like this, but it, it probably means we're going to have to bite the bullet and design something which has rear super firing, but only forward, uh, but not forward super firing. I'm, I'm dislike that a whole lot, but it's just the cards we're dealt currently, and we can definitely get turrets. Should not have any problems. I he thought we could build secondary turrets on battleships now, but I guess not. <clears throat> actually, that might have only enabled us to do it without actually being able to do it well. <laughs> Anyways, I'm getting a frog in my throat suddenly. This is the perfect time to call this video to a close. So, all these things I will ponder off camera. I will be able to catch up on the comments. And I'll catch you back for the next episode. Until then, thanks for watching and take care.